As tensions rose after the Second World War, Europe was rearmed at a rapid pace. The Americans, Canadians and British built bases throughout Western Europe. In preparation for a potential war with the Soviet Union. However, the war with the Soviet Union never came. In this episode we explore the remains of the Cold War on this massive 380 hectare large airbase, which initially housed the Canadian Air Force, but was later used for testing electronic warfare on Soviet equipment. Join us on this extensive adventure into one of the most visible remnants of the Cold War. We begin our adventure at the runway of the complex. Next to the runway we encounter our first vehicle. The impressive Soviet-made SZU-234 Shilka, a radar-guided anti-aircraft weapon, first introduced in 1957. This rather compact vehicle could fire at an incredibly fast rate to destroy enemy planes detected by the radar system. Seeing such a vehicle in near intact condition was incredibly cool and impressive. Unfortunately, all the hatches were closed, so we couldn't take a look inside. It was painted in what seemed to be a desert camouflage, which was odd considering we are in Western Europe. What's perhaps even more unusual is the fact that it's Soviet made, and we are on French soil. The terrain has quite a few of these old Soviet vehicles. We'll delve into why this is a bit later. First we head into the forest, where airplanes would have been stationed. All the doors and windows are missing, resembling more of an empty shell. In the past, pilots would spend most of their days here, training in jets. Behind the barrack, we discovered a more interesting structure. Two boilers that once produced steam. The steam was probably used for heating the buildings in the past. The F-84 Thunder Jet, once stationed here, was the first jet released by the US for military use. To understand the history of the terrain, we must also go back to the 1940s. Europe was split into two blocks after the Second World War, the Soviet-controlled East and the Western Military Alliance NATO. Defensive measures included the construction of many new military installations throughout Europe. The base we are covering today was built by the Canadians and opened in the early 1950s. F-84 Thunder Jets and F-86 Sabres were stationed here on this vast terrain. Soldiers housed here stayed for long periods of time, and to entertain them and their families many facilities were added, including a cinema and a swimming pool, as well as typical Canadian sports like curling and ice skating.
We then head back to the main area, where more barracks are located. We were quite spooked all of the sudden. But the sound, which kind of sounded like a jet, turned out to be an actual jet. RC models being flown on the day of our exploration. This meant we weren't alone on the terrain. On the positive side, it enhanced the feeling of being on a former airfield. After some walking, we arrived at another impressive Soviet vehicle. What you're seeing right now is the T-62 tank, the former main battle tank, used by the Soviets. Dating from the early 1960s, it defined the Cold War during the 1960s and the 70s as the most modern equipment of the Soviet Union at the time. And it was still quite impressive to witness such a tank. The inside was incredibly cramped and hard to move around in. But much of it still seemed quite intact. Given a unique insight into what it must have been like to surf in this T-62. A car drove by, indicating we were not alone on the terrain. See him? We had to wait a bit before heading to the other part. During the late 1950s, the airbase was quite successful, with personnel enjoying their stay and the base luxuries. The newer F-86 Sabre was also stationed here and was soon to be upgraded by the F-104 Starfighter. However, French politics shifted towards greater military independence. Under Charles de Gaulle's leadership, the Canadians had to leave along with the Americans. In 1967, France left NATO altogether, handing the airfield over to the French. The French didn't have a clear plan for the airfield, leaving it in a state of abandonment. On the runway, a row of armored personnel carriers were stored. These vehicles appeared in a much worse state, with exterior damage and largely empty interiors. These weren't Soviet-issued models, but French-made AMX-13s VCIs, which were used by several NATO countries during the 60s and the 70s. We waited a couple of hours until the RC club left the property. Now we had a chance to explore the remaining abandoned vehicles. The hangars were unfortunately mostly stripped out. But one was an exception. It was heavily reinforced so we couldn't get inside. But we could look through a hole. Surprisingly military vehicles were still stored here which was unexpected given the state of the entire site. We reached the collection of even more vehicles. There were multiple trucks with something more impressive in between. A 9K31 Strela-1, an infrared surface-to-air missile system.
The trucks appeared ordinary at first, but inside we discovered something remarkable. A lot of radar equipment was still there, and it seemed mostly intact. This was cutting edge technology of the Soviet Union in the 70s and 80s, and was considered top secret at the time. After the Canadians left, the base was reinstated in the late 70s for one of the most secretive projects in the Western Bloc. France and other NATO countries secretly smuggled these vehicles out of the Soviet Union to train and study their radar defensive capabilities. This was done in extreme secrecy during the height of the Cold War in the 1980s, with most efforts focused on bypassing the surface-to-air missile system. After the Cold War, the program was no longer needed, leading to the abandonment of the base and its vehicles. We then moved to the last areas of the terrain. There were two mobile radar systems still fully set up. In cooperation with other vehicles, these systems would have provided radar protection. We found another abandoned vehicle a bit further on the terrain, sitting alone in a field. The white vehicle is a 2K12 Cub, another surface to air missile system. Although the missiles are long gone, these heat-seeking systems were once used to shoot down enemy planes. All the machines we explored during our adventure were abandoned after the Cold War had ended, as they were no longer needed. However, since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, these ancient machines seem more relevant than ever. What the future holds for these machines is unknown, but considering their current state, it's unlikely they will ever face conflict again.